cubs know they can appeal to almost any of the lionesses for affection. And sometimes even for milk, if there's another nursing mother in the pride. If they're not welcome, they're gently but firmly told to go away with a foot or even a tail. The pride represents a form of life insurance for all its members. With so many hunters in a single group, there's almost always enough to eat for everyone. Just how Dez and Jen Bartlett managed to obtain such remarkably intimate scenes of such ferocious and private animals is a secret we'll be looking at in just a moment. Making good wildlife films requires more than being in the right place at the right time. You also have to make sure the wildlife doesn't know you're there. So once the Bartlett's settle on their basic location, one of the first things Des did was to start building a camera blind. When his nephew, Ross Plant, flew in for a family get-together, Des put him to work manhandling the quarter-inch steel plates needed to protect the cameraman from a possible lion attack or, just as likely, a misplaced footstep from a six-ton elephant. Skillful camouflage made the blind look precisely like a termite mound. Camouflage or not, this old matriarch isn't fooled for a minute. Still, the blind helped the Bartlett's capture some never-before-seen close-ups of wildlife behavior without the animals ever suspecting Big Brother was watching. As usual, when lions and elephants mix, it's a standoff. And as usual, to avoid confrontation, the two species keep their distance. In fact, the lions would love to attack one of the baby elephants, but the adults keep such a close watch on them that there's little danger to be killed. When the lions weren't around, the Bartlett's were only too happy to aim their cameras at their larger neighbors. Elephant society is founded on strictly matriarchal lines, so all the adults in this herd are females. Mature males are only tolerated at breeding time, and young males leave the herd when they reach adolescence. The system isn't all that different from the way lions organize their lives. There's nothing an elephant loves so much as water. Bathing helps cool them off and keeps their skin in good condition. pay no attention to the ducks, who seem entirely oblivious to the noise and activity around them. This great lady was having the time of her life in the water, totally unaware of the cameraman only a few feet away. Despite their thick skins and enormous bulk, elephants are remarkably dainty. The trunk is so sensitive, it can actually pick up a single blade of grass. Notice the way the adults always keep the young within a protective circle.
example of just how delicate an elephant's sense of touch really is. How about that? It gives a whole new meaning to the phrase rolling with the punches. That friend tortoise isn't out of the woods yet. This cub is more than a little curious about what's inside that walking tin can. First, the mother inspects the package and quickly decides it's not worth the effort. Then she retires to watch the cubs have a go. Thank you. 
nearly suffocated. The standard killing technique of lions.
that pepper and salt tolerantly play the role of kindly fathers. That's salt's tail they're sparring with. And next it's time to attack Pepper's black mane.
cat is familiar with the way it laps up milk. Lions drink in exactly the same way. It doesn't scoop the water up, but rather uses the rough upper surface of the tongue like a towel to carry a small sip to its mouth. In slow motion, you can see the upper surface of the tongue at work. The prey animals at the other end of the water hole are probably safe from attack by the sated lions. But a female cheetah with young to feed is an equal threat and a much faster one. that 
with every attack. He's getting closer. Seen 
they get the lion's share of whatever food is going. No 
normal conditions, a jackal would never take such a liberty with a feeding lion. Perhaps it hopes to distract the lion long enough to steal some scraps for itself. Instead, the poor starving lioness is reduced to playing the role of jackal, looking for scraps from her lord and master's table. In the end, the pied crow does almost as well as the lioness. She makes a half-hearted attempt to scavenge off the scavengers. Finally, her strength gives out. Too weak to kill for herself, let alone fight for her share of a kill. She won't last much longer now. Well, there you have it.